G'day viewers, I am back at this site that I uh, put together about six months ago. Some of you might be familiar with it. It's a basic Victron system, Rexu batteries charged by a generator. Well, there's been a change here and we're gonna change this into a three phase site. So we've got another two battery cabinets um, full of batteries and I've got two more Victron inverters. There they are there. Multi plus two, five thousands. And we're gonna convert it to three phase. Now this is actually my first three phase Victron. So uh, I actually looked on the uh, internet on YouTube to try and find anything um, about setting up a three phase Victron. I couldn't really find anything that was that helpful. Um, so I'll keep you updated and give you some key points that I'll learn as I go through and uh, hopefully it will help out others in the future. Righto, time to get into it. Righto, so that's the end of day one. Bit of a short day, I didn't get here till late, but um, got a bit done. So essentially what I've had to do is get the power back on. So I had to remove everything I had there and then sort of do a few temporary things, which certainly isn't ideal, but um, you can't, no one can get in here, so that's kind of okay. Um, so I've got some more form ply up there. I've put my two extra inverters up. I've spaced them like that because I want to retain this area for my new switchboard because all my cable entries and generator and power points behind that switchboard, there's all penetrations in that bit of board there. So I wanna keep everything there basically the same. I've run some cable trays, one's for my DC, one's for my AC. Uh, we have a thing called um, DC segregation and AC segregation where uh, DC and AC cables need to be 50 millimeters apart at least. Um, so in order to do that, I've gotta have two cable trays to do it all properly. Um, if it's in the duct like it was before, then I can get away with it by putting one of the cables, whether it's DC or AC, in conduit, and that can be in the same duct. That achieves the same objective. Um, got my Victron links up on the wall there, um, or powering, links powering. Never used these before, very impressed. Um, once you take that cover off, they're actually really heavy duty, and they're a lot bigger than I expected. Um, lots of room for cable terminations and that sort of thing. So my other two battery cabinets are gonna go in here, one here, one there. Also need to have my DC isolator for each battery um, for both testing purposes and fault, you know, if there's a fault. Um, and then we'll have the DC isolators under each inverter also. It's a lot of isolators, but it's the correct way to do it. So that's how I'm doing it. Um, so my battery cabinets will go there. DC isolator, DC cables in there. So that's my junction for my DC cables. And then there'll be a DC cable run, which will each be the same length, which is a little bit tricky when they're not all the same distance apart. But um, my DC will come out of this one off to my inverters. There's four terminals in there. I'm gonna use three of them. Leaves me a spare one for any future solar generation. Um, and I can also bolt onto these terminals on the side here, like that. So I've got a few extra terminals there I can use. I've left a bit of a space here uh, for a couple of MPPTs in the future, because um, at the moment this is charged by generator, and, um, and then the generator is idle until the battery's drained down and um, it's required again. So there we go. When I come back, I will do my DC cable run, terminate my cables, and uh, see how we go with all that. Righto, catch you later. Righto, g'day guys. Um, end of day two, albeit very short days. I do have school run to do, and um, I've got to take my son away for the weekend for a motocross event, so I need to get ready for that. So family first, as always. But um, just finishing up here, <clears throat> today has mostly been sorting out my cable sizes and um, my cable routing and everything. So I've relocated the DC isolator for this original battery pack. 
Um, I've got my ex, uh, cables exiting on the other side of the cabinet now into there. Um, still on the original plan, second battery cabinet will go there, third one will go there. I've got to reroute that cable obviously. Um, I've got my Lynx power in bus bar system which I have to say I'm really impressed with. Um, it's really easy to work with and plenty of space for the cables. Uh, these are 70 mil squared, sorry 50 mil squared. And um, one thing I've learned uh, with doing this is any, anything to do with batteries and charging and that sort of thing, it, it's always important that your battery cables and the resistance and everything is the same so that you get equal charging across your batteries. But reading the Victron manual, because as I said, this is my first parallel or three phase system, is they're very, um, they emphasize a lot how important it is that your cable resistance between inverters is identical because any volt drop, so say they're all under load and this one's um, drawing a bit more current due to volt drop because that's what happens as your volt drops down, your current goes up. Um, it's potentially going to trip out on overload whereas the other two are still fine and that's because of cable sizing and differences. So it's important that your cable length and your cable sizing is identical to avoid problems <coughs> with your three phase system or parallel system tripping. Um, that's really important and that's a bit of a challenge as you can see here of the cables going to this inverter because it's way closer to the bus bar. <coughs> Excuse me. I've had to loop them over here in the cable tray which is really annoying because it makes it messy and takes up a lot of room. Um, so that's frustrating. Uh, in the future I'll probably think of a better way of doing that but um, <coughs> in the meantime I've had to work with what I've got and that was that original system right there in front of me. Um, so again, I've got to extend my cable tray over here for the AC and DC segregation. So all these AC cables will eventually come straight down, bridge across that one into the bottom cable tray and then back up to the new switchboard that I'll put in up there. And likewise with these two, they'll have a cable tray going down there, bridging over that one into that one. Just trying to keep it all as neat as possible and compliant. Um, so yeah, that's the that's been the challenge is uh, getting the cable sizing right and also staying within the permissible volt drop. So you don't want more than 2.5% volt drop. Uh, Victron has a really good calculator uh, app that you can download to calculate your DC cable sizes, um, and you can select 12, 24, and 48 volts and your different lengths and cable size and everything is really pretty good. But yeah, you want to stay below 2.5% um, volt drop uh, across your whole system. So cable sizing is important. Don't skimp on your cable. It's extremely expensive, especially with the price of copper. Um, but it's important that you don't skimp on it. Um, good thing to note is if you're considering 12, 24 or 40 volt system, a 24 volt system will require uh, smaller cable than a 12 volt system uh, because it can carry more current and so forth because of the voltage. So if you're designing a system, keep your voltage um, in mind when you're doing your cable calcs because you might find you're better off going to a 24 or to a 48 volt system um, just for the sizing of your cables. Alrighty, and keep those cable lengths nice and short and keep them all even and exact. Right out. That's it for now. I'm off to enjoy my weekend and I'll be back on Monday. Okay, so um, as you can see, I've done a lot of the cable tray. Everything looks really messy at the moment. Um, I've run a lot of my DC cables to the uh, inverters, back to the Victron links. And I've just pulled off the switchboard because the old one's way too small. So I'm putting in a 24 pole switchboard because uh, obviously we're three phase now so I need a lot more room. So I pulled everything off, uh, it's all quite a mess. Um, so yeah, just in the process of putting the new switchboard on, fitting all the AC off and uh, it will be at the process of um, finishing off the other two batteries when they arrive and then commissioning the system.
So yeah, bit of a mess at the moment, but we're getting there. Righto, we're on the home straight now, uh, almost at the end of this one. As you can see, I've got all my cable trays uh, in, cables installed, everything, all the cables run, data cable, AC, DC, new three-phase switchboard, just need some pole fillers in there and a little bit more labelling. Um, the cable tray I would have made a bit deeper. It's quite shallow and when you're trying to keep your cable runs of 70 mil cable all the same length so this one I've had to sort of double up on itself and come back to keep it the same length that's really important Victron are really uh, specific about that and that's to keep the resistance of the cables the same otherwise you're gonna have troubles with your inverters when they're under heavy load um, one might trip out and cause the others to all collapse as well um, we've got a single phase generator on this site and I was hoping I could charge all three batteries with it, which I can, but only using one inverter if it's a three phase system. So I commissioned it the other day. Commissioning went really easy um, and really well. It's important to make sure that all the inverters are the same and they're on the same firmware. And then the process is relatively simple. I'll include in the description a link uh, to some really handy Victron information for those um, installers out there that wish to have a look. Uh, so with charging the batteries with the single phase generator, I can do it with one of the inverters on a three phase system, um, but I can't do it with all three and that's because of the power pass feature on the inverters. Um, that's not really practical because that's only um, 70 amps DC of charging capacity and that's gonna take forever to charge these three battery banks. So we're going to swap out the generator to a three phase and that way all three inverter chargers can do their thing and um, charge them up a lot quicker. So that's all the cabinets there. Um, again, I'm not advocating Rexu batteries. I'm still on the fence about what they're like. Um, time will tell. But uh, that's my DC cable run and the isolators there up to the Victron links. Um, yeah, so all going well. Um, I'll give you a final rundown once it's all up and running. Right, Ed, so uh, this is all up and running now and I'm going to finish off this video here. Um, I've actually got it set up as a single phase system at the moment, uh, although it is a three phase system and the reason I've got it set up as single phase is so I can use the generator um, to its uh, capacity. Uh, instead of just using the one inverter charger before to do the charging, like I mentioned, I've now got all three. Although this is a three phase site, there is actually no three phase loads as yet uh, because the place is still being built. So for now, until we can get a three phase generator, I'm just gonna leave it as three phase so we can charge the batteries nice and quickly. So they're all installed now and connected really simple to be honest the all the batteries are just daisy chained um, and the Victron system detected the new battery straight away these two cabinets are uh, quite low on charge and this one's full because this was the existing one so at the moment you can only push 70 amps per cabinet into those so at the moment we've got you know, it's, it's fluctuating between 140 150 but um, we've got a few losses there on the uh, inverters themselves so um, yeah very easy to switch between single phase and three phase obviously you've got your AC wiring to consider um, but uh, as I say there are no three phase loads on this site as yet so it doesn't really matter it's just a matter of plugging into the master inverter and flicking it from three phase to single phase and paralleling and then sharing that those settings with the other two inverters uh, using VE configure, uh, which as I mentioned, I will leave some links in the uh, video description to some really handy Victron information. Um, nothing with this job was a struggle. Everything went really well. Um, when I initially got this inverter set up, the original one, it trying to do a firmware update it actually 
bricked itself. So it completely dead, couldn't do anything, and I had to force a firmware update. Didn't have the same issue with the others. They're all on the same firmware, and um, they're all happily working along. Um, got the servo there and our screen and uh, modem for remote monitoring. So, yep, really happy with that one. I'll be back uh, to finish off the labelling so it's all nice and compliant and put my tickets in for it as is required. And, yeah, really happy with this one. Really enjoyed it. So, a few little things I'd do different, but not much, really. I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got something out of it. And uh, check the video description for those links to the Victron information, which I found really helpful. Um, again, I'm not encouraging DIY. I'm anti-DIY. I'm a licensed electrical contractor. Um, but I do these videos to educate people, but to the technical side of it is for the installers. So uh, if you're not an installer, um, don't you know, go playing with this stuff. Pay someone who knows what they're doing to do it. Uh, when it's three phase, it's 400 volts. So you're playing with a lot of volts. So yeah, please engage a licensed electrician. Um, that way, if anything goes wrong with the system, it's back on them as well. You don't have to worry about it. There's no issues with insurance or anything like that. So uh, always keep that in mind, guys. Righto, cheers.